anti-science Christian extremist. <laughs> like when you prick your finger. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yay, he's here. Hi. Oh, hi, Rude. I'm very excited you're you're coming. You're going to be in studio with us tomorrow. Yeah. And then I'm taking you out for a sushi yeah. that is as tender as. Yeah, uh, the Angel's Labia. Yes, right. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I don't even know what the context of that of it was that time. It's just what I say whenever you ask me anything. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Good morning. It's your auto response. <laughs> what are you doing today, Angel's Labia? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't. It's hard to, as I was saying, to wake up in The Handmaid's Tale, a different version every Monday, isn't it? Uh, you just said the Texas judge's ruling in the uh, myth of, oh boy, am I going to say that wrong? Myth of Pristone mm -hmm. case should be gut level frightening. If it stands, it means a court can get rid of any approved drug if it offends their religion think of the crazy s some faiths preach it goes way beyond abortion and birth control that's exactly what i was thinking and you said it on twitter yeah. you said my invisible sky wizard doesn't think you should take medication for depression by zoloft i believe suffering is a gift from god by pain meds and i don't think i'm being hyperbolic here it's true it, it's yeah. it, suddenly after 20 years not up to the fda anymore what drugs yeah. are are approved it, it completely undermines the foundation of, of science and and frankly uh, capitalism because if uh, if you know this should be something that alarms right wingers because here's something that a company is making money on right. and that has been approved that has done everything it was supposed to do mm -hmm. has been approved for 20 years and then they're coming in and saying we're not saying it's dangerous there is there's actually no proof at all that it's dangerous in fact many many other drugs are yeah. more dangerous like. Like, you know, Viagra and it's, what's um, safer. What is it safer than Tylenol is the, you know, yeah, safer than yeah, safer yeah. than just about every other drug. But we but it can be taken away and that's going to frighten the hell out of companies. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's just a bizarre effed up decision. I yeah. mean, and even the decision itself has all of this stuff woven in there mm -hmm. where he talks about it being an unborn, an unborn baby and, you know, using the language of the, yeah. the, the abortionist the yeah. movement. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it, it really is terrifying. I, you know, we always talk about the silver lining. You're, I, I, people might not realize really a esteemed tenured professor. Yes. I know, right? Yeah. I, right. How did that happen? <laughs> No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm a department chair. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yes. Well, yes. First of all, yes. a, a number of things on that level. You said, um, it, one of the things you said as a department chair, uh, you said it's honestly weird I'm held to higher standards on financial improprieties than a GD gust justice on the Supreme Court. So uh, it, it, there's that. But I guess my point is just what, what you're seeing happening in Tennessee is something yeah. that is both inspirational i mean you just said what is the hardest ball that been played in tennessee legally send in the feds and crawl up their a-holes over civil rights violations i mean we really are at a point where this is just completely anti-democratic them saying we're just not going to seat you we don't care yeah. what the people voted for and and you know was it within their legal rights to do it i don't know well you know what based on based on you know uh, on on the rules of the of the legislature i suppose but there are all kinds of other issues behind it issues of fairness issues of racism um civil rights issues but here's the thing democrats respond to things like this by saying well, you know, we really need to follow the rules. We really need to follow the laws. We really and, and not, nobody's saying do anything illegal. But like with the Mipa Prestone uh, um, decision, like just say, no, screw you. The FDA trumps you. You yeah. know what? The, the, the FDA, the safety of people and yeah. the safety of their lives trumps your stupid decision. And we're going to go with the, the, the judge in uh, Washington state. Yeah. Well, yeah, and on the Tennessee thing, I just was talking about the youth vote. You said, I mean, the Tennessee GOP just spit in the faces of young people. They told them their lives don't matter. Only their racist power and guns matter. Gen Z is going to them up. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that that's, yeah. you said, you dumb GOP mother in Tennessee just lost the youth vote for the rest of your bull racist lives. I mean, yeah. I, you know, if it didn't affect so many lives so horribly rude, you're right. I would just go, keep going, <laughs> keep going. Yeah, yeah, you're going to lose yeah. every woman, every, you know, young person's vote in America if you keep going. Yeah. And they just made Justin Jones and Justin Pearson into in, into leaders, you know, just national leaders. They have. And and if they can keep the energy going into 2024, I mean, here's the thing that gets me about Tennessee. Tennessee, as late as 2006, elected a Democratic governor. 
And 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 that and in his Phil Bredesen's reelection, he won 88 out of 95 counties in Tennessee. The Democrat did. He won some of the reddest parts of the state. It was it was overwhelming. Now, what magical thing happened after 2006 that might have changed a bunch of people's minds from voting Democrat? Yeah. Obama. They yeah. elected a black guy yeah. president. Yeah. And and that, and that just allowed the, the conservatives to, to drive everyone crazy by just being blatantly racist and saying, see, they, they actually elevated a black man to the highest office in the land. You know that you're next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you tweeted Clarence Thomas broke the law. No Republicans are calling for his resignation or impeachment. Justin Pearson and Justin Jones broke the rules of decorum and they were expelled by Republic- Republicans. That's an object lesson mm-hmm. in how whiteness functions in the United States. And again, I said, I guess we should be grateful that they're just way, you know, transparent now about it's not even a dog whistle. Right. I mean, it's just. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know. I say pour pour one out for the for the one Republican that that didn't vote to expel them, uh, a guy from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, who just was like, "This is not the right thing to do." Yeah, there are other things we could be doing here. That's not expulsion. What sing, one single Republican was willing to stand up for for Pearson and Jones? Yeah, um, you you also said it's one thing to own a painting by Hitler. It's altogether something different if you're displaying it next to a Norman Rockwell. You could argue you're saying something about Rockwell or art, but mostly you're just saying something about yourself. Um, yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> think of the reasons you might think it's really fantastic to have a bunch of Nazi memorabilia, including a signed copy of Mein Kampf, right? Yeah. Signed copy of Mein Kampf, the, the Hitler napkins. The, I mean, not the Hitler napkins, the Nazi napkins, the linens. It's like it's like <laughs> yeah. and I somebody on Twitter pointed out like the thing about people that collect this kind of stuff is there's all the stuff they they don't show. It's like they want to gauge your response to the stuff that they have on display before you, they show you the really good stuff. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. in air quotes there. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it, I, I, I don't understand the defense of it. I don't understand that. Yeah, he has statues of uh, fallen communist leaders in his in his garden <laughs> oh, because it reminds him about, you know, the cost of evil. And I'm like, I, I you know, I don't I don't I, I don't think that uh, that that Yankees fans have, you know, Boston Red Sox stuff up just so that they can, you know, spit at it every day. Yeah. Um, by the way, speaking of far right uh, lunacy, uh, Trump has told advisors to hire Laura Loomer, a far right anti-Muslim activist, as for a campaign role. And you just tweeted, "Get that crazy one, the one who's effing nuts." No, not Sydney, <laughs> the young one with the handcuffs. Um, and now this has like become the biggest big bag of rats fight, fight, fight right. on Twitter. Right? Marjorie Taylor Greene, Laura Loomer. I, I mean, really and truly, you are all equally awful. 